Let's be honest, a lot of this AI stuff feels like a gimmick. It feels like a toy for tech guys in California, not for people who work with their hands. And the art it makes, it's sterile, glossy, and completely soulless. I agree, that's not craft. That's a computer's fantasy. It's completely lifeless. This is craft. This has a soul. It has flaws, it tells a story. The entire conversation about AI is missing this point. It's asking the wrong question. That's why this entire conversation about AI and art is fundamentally broken. People are treating it like a magic button to outsource the best part of the job. We're just using it wrong. Today, we're not gonna answer the boring question, will the machine replace the artist? The answer, thankfully, is no. That question is a distraction. The real question is this. How do we as craftspeople use a technology this powerful to make more time for the craft we actually love? How do I use AI to get four new, brilliant, and free employees who can handle the boring, messy, businessy parts of my craft? Stay with me because that's what we're diving into today. Now, a quick disclosure, I work on AI at Google. That is my day job, and this isn't a sales pitch. I'm an artisan who genuinely uses these tools like Gemini every single day at work and in my personal life. I'm here to show you what works, what works for me, and what you can do with these tools. And if you're not a woodturner, don't worry. This applies to every single craftsperson drowning in admin work. Ceramics, jewelry, leather. If you have a trade and a soul, you can be an augmented artisan. Okay, so here's the way that I think about AI in my craft business. AI is not a single tool. It's like having four brand new, very specialized employees working in my shop. I call them the four partners. Your job is to give them the right tasks. The first of our four new hires is the design partner. Now, this is where amateurs go completely sideways. So you don't ask it to design your final product for you. You use it for sourcing ideas, kind of like a sommelier for your conceptual materials. For a new bowl idea, I don't say design a wooden bowl. That's a tourist question, it's terrible. And I'm gonna get boring results if that's what I ask. I told it, act as a design historian. Show me 10 examples of minimalist Scandinavian bowl forms from the 1960s that won't compete with complex wood grain. See the difference? I'm not asking for a finished product, I'm asking for research. I want the AI to find resources for me so that I can decide what I like and how I want to create my new piece. Now, as you can see, the AI gave me a dozen great references. I pick a few elements I think are worth exploring, and then I do the actual work. That's the way the partnership should work. The AI provides options, and the maker provides synthesis and actual design. I can also ask it for ideas about, for example, things that occur in nature, which expands my design vocabulary and exposes me to new ideas without trying to do the heavy lifting of designing the pieces for me. To be even more efficient, I can save specific prompts or instructions as gems or custom GPTs. That way I never even have to rewrite my prompt. I can just add the relevant details and have the AI spit out exactly what I'm looking for. It saves me time again. So here's the single most important lesson we're going to cover. The machine is only as good as your instructions. Writing a good prompt is a skill and it's the language of the future. Think of AI as less of an assistant and more of a brilliant, obedient, but extremely literal intern. You have to give it a role, a context, and some constraints. So how do you master this new language? Don't pay for some expensive course. The best resources are actually free. Look up prompt libraries online. It's like getting the chef's own secret recipe book. Look, it's a skill and like wood turning, it takes practice. There are also a lot of free classes on prompt engineering. That's what we call the discipline of asking questions properly to get good results from an AI system. And these courses are available widely from IBM, Coursera, Google, tons of places. Pick your favorite. Look, working with an AI system is kind of like a marriage in some ways. You need to learn how to ask in a way where you'll be understood. Brute forcing it is rarely the best approach. The machine also can't read your mind. You have to learn to tell it exactly what you're looking for and your results will improve significantly. Okay, let's switch gears here a little bit. Now we all have that inevitable argument in wood turning forums online, pricing. We use 
some mystical formula, the width of the piece times the height times your shoe size, or your birth year, or whatever. What if we could analyze the local market to figure out how to price appropriately for exactly where our next show is? AI partner number two is your pricing arbitrator. It's your market expert. The prompt I use is act as a local market analyst for handmade wooden bowls. Given a spalted maple bowl, 10 inches in diameter, shallow form, with a natural edge and a unique grain pattern on the exterior, provide a sensible price range for the current market in San Jose, California. I changed the market from San Jose, California to Montesoreno, California, which is a pretty wealthy area just down the road. Or I can change it to Pine Bluff, Arkansas, an area with a slightly lower average income. Or I can change it to Etsy, which is a competitive and saturated online marketplace and the ideal price of the bowl changes. The AI basically acted like a business consultant, helping me position my work competitively without giving the work away and without leaving money on the table. Now this can be super helpful if you're on the craft circuit or if you're selling in a new area, or if you just wanna get a sense of where your work stands in an online marketplace. It uses data from all over the internet, it scales it for your zip code, and it gives you an idea of how to price your work. Give it more information for more specific results. If you tell it you're a brand new woodturner and this is your first bowl, it'll adjust the price accordingly. Now tell it your grandest aspirations as a woodturner and see how that affects the sale price. Just hypothetically, for example, okay, now run the analysis like I'm a well-known artist with multiple pieces in the Smithsonian and a hit TV program on Magnolia Network. I was People Magazine's sexiest woodsman alive and Taylor Swift knows me by name. Pretty cool to see how it adjusts the price and provide some guidance on why the price would vary based on the type of sale. Again, this can be saved as a gem or a custom GPT. I just put in the type of bowl and where I'll sell it and it does the analysis automatically, saving me time again. Now let's talk about the part of being an artist that many of us really hate, actually selling our stuff online. It's competitive, it's expensive, and it's really time consuming. And this is where the third partner, the marketing automator, is a huge help. So I took a photo of a finished piece and gave the AI this prompt. You are my brand's storyteller. Write three Instagram posts for this bowl. You must use my wood turning philosophy, the terroir of the piece and the story of its origin. I'll give you the bowl's specific backstory, weave that story into all of the copy. It gave me three great options in 10 seconds. It would have taken me 30 minutes to write something half as good. Look, the AI is a great marketer. That means that I don't have to study it. I'm just a guy who wants to make wood round. I'm letting the AI do the marketing hustle so I can get back to the real work. When I finish a piece, I want it on my website ASAP. This makes that dream a reality. I also asked it to craft a compelling description for my online Shopify store. Okay, so what if your marketing partner could sound exactly like you? To get Gemini to write descriptions in your unique voice, you can actually feed it your past product descriptions and some writing samples. So think of it like you're teaching your AI partner your personal style, your cadence, the way that you like to talk, your sense of humor. This is where you can unlock the maximum value, not with a generic AI voice, stock Gemini or stock GPT, but with your voice. It's less like having an AI working for you and more like having a second you working for you. If you've ever wished there were more hours in the day to do the things you need to do, this is a really powerful way to make more time. And what am I gonna say next? Save it as a gem or a GPT so that you can just upload a single photo and a couple of words about the piece and watch it do all of your marketing on your behalf in your voice so that you can get right back to the workbench. Also, if you want more videos like this, do me a favor, hit that like button. Let's me know I'm on the right track. Okay, so we've covered design, research, and marketing. But the fourth partner is the one that really changes the game. I think that this is the future. You stop just using AI tools and you start building your own. You can stop renting and start owning your digital workshop. Now, I have a confession to make. I can't draw at all. Like not even a simple bowl. For a wood turner, that's pretty embarrassing. My sketches are lopsided, they're wasteful, and I generally just start cutting on a piece and kind of hope that things work out. That's why I had to build this. This is my own super simple design tool. I call it Symmetry Design Studio, and I'm gonna tell you why in a second. It's, it's pretty simple. You draw half of the shape on the right side of the screen because you can't mess up half the shape, and the app mirrors it on the left side in real time. But here's the best part. 
when I finally have a profile that I like, I click render in 3D and the app instantly generates an interactive 3D model. I can spin it around, I can check the proportions and test 20 designs in 10 minutes with an interface that's so simple that it's basically Microsoft Paint and it's way cheaper than Fusion. Now, I'm not a programmer. I built this by giving the AI a very detailed blueprint. I didn't write a single line of code. I just gave the AI a detailed step-by-step -step instruction manual on what I wanted the software to do, and it built the custom tool for me in one try. I actually did the same thing for the most annoying, soul-crushing part of selling online, for me anyway, which is photography. Getting a perfect product photo is a total pain. Usually it involves buying a light box, some backgrounds, buying a dedicated camera and lens setup to get that soft background focus look. It's expensive and it's another skill tree that I just don't want to unlock right now. I'd much rather be wood turning than worrying about lens coating, shutter speeds, and different methods for measuring aperture. So I built another tool called Wood Studio Pro. Here's how it works. I snap a couple quick photos of my piece when I'm all done with it messy background and all, then I upload the photo and select a mood from the drop-down menu. The AI cuts the wood piece from the messy background. Then the app processes my picture automatically. Now for these moods, Authentic Studio gives me kind of a clean gray background, Workbench places it on a rustic surface, and Sinister gives me this kind of wild Tron vibe. And I built this entire app again with a single prompt. I just wrote out the full plan, including the photo instructions and how I wanted it to run, which is in a browser through a single link that I could save somewhere. Super easy. And the AI built it. Look, I'm not writing code. I'm writing natural language instructions, and the machine is using these to do the work for me. And instead of renting another photo editing tool for 15 or 50 or, Lord forbid, 100 bucks a month, one that might be optimized for perfume or stuffed animals or skincare products or stuff that you don't sell, I'm paying about two cents per photo for one that's optimized for my exact aesthetic. It's a big savings and a big improvement on stock photo editing software. Now, I have other custom tools that I've built for other tasks, but the point is I'm not just prompting anymore. I'm not just asking the machine questions. I'm building a digital workshop of custom machines designed to solve my exact problems. In a way, they sort of mirror the physical workshop. I think people are trying to use general AI interfaces to do everything, which makes it kind of like a shopsmith. It sort of does everything, but it's not the best at any one thing. No shade at shopsmith. Look, for me, it's just been great to have purpose-built machines for single tasks that do them really well so that I can focus on making them great on that one task. Now, is this an AI-generated bowl? Of course not. An AI can't feel the tool vibrate. It can't read the tension in the wood. It can't have a conversation with the material. It can't bring the experience and perspective to the piece that you can. But could an AI help make this bowl? 100%. An AI partner helps me find the historical inspiration. It gives me technical advice. It can write the marketing copy to help me sell it. And it could even build the custom software I use to design and photograph my work. In this way, I am augmented, not replaced by AI. So I guess that's the real choice. It's not artist versus machine. It's now the artisan wielding new powerful tools. It's about automating the administrative drudgery so you can focus on the one thing the machine can never do, the craft itself. Look, AI isn't the thing that will replace you. It's the thing that will let you be more you. This isn't just about saving time. It's about saving your shop time, which aside from family time is the most valuable time there is. The time for your hands to be back on the wood. The time for the noise of your tools, not the noise of your inbox. That's the point. The rest is just noise. Now, I've put the full copy and paste prompts for Symmetry Studio and the Wood Studio Pro down in the description below. Seriously, take them and start building your own digital workshop today. You can tweak them for ceramics, leather, whatever your craft is. You can change the moods. It's all done in plain language. Let me know what you wish you could automate about your business in the comments and share any custom tools you've built so other makers can benefit. Look, the big stores and the shops and the firms, they get to pay people to do their admin stuff for them. This is how we level the playing field. Now, if you've learned something today, do me a favor and hit that like button. It helps me to know that I'm on the right track. 
And if you want a video on how I'm using AI in my personal life to save time and stay organized, expose me to new ideas, and explore my hobbies even deeper, drop that in the comments below too. I'd be happy to make you one. And if you're a woodturner who likes thinking about the why and the how of this craft, I would be honored to have you subscribe so that you can see my wood turning content. I put a lot of effort into it. My name is Brad. Thanks for being here, and I'll see you on the next video.